Hello, in this video I will show you how to create a SDL2 window. We'll start by creating a new CodeBlocks C project. Let's do some cleaning first. Now we need to tell the linker that we need to use the SDL2 libraries. Let's add the sdl.h header file to our code. In order to be able to use sdl, we'll need to initialize it first. For now, we'll use only sdl init video. You can read more about other initialization flags that you can enable on the sdl wiki page. sdl is a pure C library, which means that the programmer is in charge of releasing any resources that was acquired during the SDL initialization. This can be achieved by using the SDL quit function. Now we need to create a window which will be used by SDL to listen for events and as a drawing surface. For this purpose, we could use the SDL create window function. The first parameter of this function is the name or the title of the window. Next to parameters, specify the window start position. We'll let the operating system position the window for now. The remaining parameters are the width and height of the window. And lastly, a flag parameter that defines some of the window properties, like the window is full screen or windowed, bordered or non-bordered, and so on. You can read more about the create window flags on the SDL wiki page. Now, let's define the window size. Say we'll have a width of 800 pixel and a height of 600 pixel. Let's read the window resource at the end. At this point, it may be a good idea to check if there is any compilation error. Ok, so we need to add the command line arguments for the main function. Now. The code compiles just fine, but we can't really see the window because it is destroyed after it is created. We can use the SDL delay function to delay the end of the program for about 2 seconds. Ok. A better idea is to use an infinite loop that will basically keep the window alive until the user closes it. To the bool point h will let us use boolean variables in our C code. This will now loop forever or until running is set to false. If you run the code now, you'll get an unresponsive window. Let's check for events and if the user has pressed the window close button, we'll set running to false, which will make a clean exit. SDL stores the events in a queue, which is a data structure which works on the principle first in, first out. This is why we need another while loop that will run until the queue is empty. If the SDL quit event was fired, we set running to false, which will break the main while loop and finish the program cleanly. In the main while loop, which is usually named the game loop, we leave some placeholders for rendering something on the screen. 
The render part of a game loop is usually split in erasing the screen, drawing in a back, back buffer, and finally switching the front back buffers in order to actually show on the screen what was drawn. We'll start by creating a renderer using the SDL create renderer function, which will have as arguments the window that owns the renderer, an index set to minus one, which means use the first driver that supports this renderer, and the flags variable, which defines the type of renderer we want. A hardware accelerated renderer synchronized with our display refresh rate. Here we clear the renderer, basically we fill the renderer surface with the current draw color. We leave the draw placeholder empty for now. Finally, we use SDL render present to actually draw on the screen the content of the renderer back buffer. Don't forget to free the renderer resource. Now, let's compile and run the code. Looks good. We can use the SDL set render draw color function to change the default drawing color. Let's try with red. Or maybe some green. Thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe.